Welcome back to Mason Talks. So after starting their season on fire, winning eight of their first nine games, the Cleveland Cavaliers have returned to the mean a little bit this past week. On Monday, they fell in a close game to the Los Angeles Clippers. And then last night, the Cavaliers lost once again, this time to the lowly Sacramento Kings, who only had three victories leading into that game and the Cavaliers now sit with a record of eight and three which still places them at second place in the NBA's Eastern Conference but they went from an eight game win streak to now falling to a two game losing streak and the reason why has been pretty clear through these past two games first and foremost The Cavaliers' defense has been lackadaisical for basically the first half of their past two games. They come out slow. The Sacramento Kings in the first half of last night's game looked like the 15-16 Golden State Warriors. They were hitting every single three because the Cavaliers just weren't really contesting that well. They were letting them get open looks, and they just their their defense their defensive effort wasn't there. And they saw similar things when they played against the Los Angeles Clippers. And, you know, to their credit, after getting ripped into by J.B. Bickerstaff at halftime, they kick things into gear a little bit and their defense plays a little bit better in the second half. But if you want to be a truly elite defensive team, which I think the Cavaliers are trying to build their identity on top of because they have Evan Mobley and Jared Allen... You have to be able to play entire full defensive games. You can't just, you know, focus all your energy in the second half and hope that you can uh, uh, pick things up in the in the late portions of the game. You got to be able to play dominant defense first, second, third, and fourth quarters, and overtime if necessary. Um, so the defense hasn't been that great, and Darius Garland has slipped a little bit in these past two games. He didn't play that great against the Clippers, and then he was even worse against the Sacramento Kings. And I think that for those two main reasons, uh, the Cavaliers have regressed a little bit and they haven't really looked that great on their West Coast road trip. They even had some problems when they played the Lakers on Sunday. But despite the fact that things haven't looked good in recent days for the Cavs, uh, I think it's pretty clear and obvious to say It is not time to panic for the Cleveland Cavaliers because being that it is an 82-game season in the NBA, this is a marathon and not a sprint for the Cleveland Cavaliers. They have plenty of time to figure things out, and I'm sure that with adequate coaching from J.B. Bickerstaff and his crew, they will start to sort of weed out those bad habits that they've built up in terms of their first half defense and some of their, uh, I guess, isolation focused offense where you see it's either Donovan Mitchell running the show or it's Darius Garland, because I, I, I think it's it's clear and obvious this team's offense is at its best when they're moving the basketball around and playing an incredibly unselfish brand of basketball. But again, Plenty of time to figure things out. And I think that as you look towards the future of this season, there are going to be three things that the Cavs need to focus on uh, heavily. And, and, and it's not it's not all winning, but these, these are the three things you need to focus on. First and foremost, if the Cavs want to have a truly successful season, they got to stay healthy. And obviously this is not something that they can entirely control. <clears throat> but you can't have, uh, uh, you know... Jared Allen missing huge chunks of the season. You can't have Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell missing huge chunks of the season. And luckily, they've had that uh, healthiness outside of Darius Garland's you know first game injury. They've been pretty healthy so far this year. But they basically just have to keep their fingers crossed that all of their key players can stay healthy. That's That's one of the most important things for the Cavaliers this year. Uh, the other key important thing is merely winning enough games to get the sixth seed in the playoffs. And I know that the Cavaliers have looked fantastic at points in this season, and I know that they've they've made you know a real run to be one of the top 
uh, you know, three or four seeds in the Eastern Conference. But all I really care about truly is making the playoffs without making the play-in tournament. I don't want to be in the play-in tournament again. That that was that was awful. Losing to the Nets and then losing to the Hawks, it was horrible. And I'm sure the Cavaliers players feel that same way. So I think that should be a real a real key focus. Don't don't make the play-in. Make the sixth seed. Win in, just win enough games. You don't have to win 60 games. You don't have to, you know, compete for being one of the greatest regular season teams of all time. Just avoid the play-in tournament. And then thirdly, this is another thing that sort of revolves around the play-in tournament. Peak at the right time, which is not what the Cavaliers did last year. Last year, the Cavaliers peaked in like January when they were cavalanching people and the Cavs, you know, ended up being a top two or three seed. Um, but then they regressed a little bit. And once you got towards the playoffs, the Cavs were just barely struggling to hang on and stay alive. And, you know, if the Cavs, would, would, you know, part of it was Ricky Rubio's injury. Part of it was the fact that, you know, you were, you were missing a ton of players and, and Rajon Rondo uh, was was getting key minutes off the bench, which is crazy to think about. That that played a, a part in it. Um, but but if the Cavaliers had peaked at the right time last year, which would have been right when they were entering the playing tournament, they probably would have beaten the Nets or or at least beaten the Hawks and made the playoffs. And who who knows where it would have gone from there? But but that's that's a key thing for the Cavaliers peak at the right time. I know it's great to start the season off real strong like this and and play a lot of good basketball out of the gates and establish yourselves early in the year, but you need to be peaking. You need to be playing your best basketball in in March and April. That's when it's really going to ultimately matter. So for the Cavaliers, I don't think it's time to panic. This West Coast road trip is always rough. I think it's good they're getting it out of the way in November early in the year. But their next step, the next thing that they need to do is is just beat the Golden State Warriors tomorrow night. You beat the Golden State Warriors tomorrow night, play a full game of basketball, uh, you know, defensively dominate Steph Curry, Andrew Wiggins, Klay Thompson and that crew. Get yourselves to nine and three, and I think you're back on track. You don't need to go on some, you know, another nine or ten game win streak. Just beat the Warriors and and go from there. You know, the Cavs are eight and three right now. Uh, I I don't think that this two game losing streak is a reason to panic. Like if they fell to eight and eight, then I'd start to have some legitimate questions about the team. But it, it, this is a long NBA season. And I think that all they can do right now for this little section of the year, because this truly is a little section of the season in the in the grand scheme of things, just beat the Warriors and get, get yourselves back on track. And I think things are going to be fine for the Cavaliers if they get back to playing their brand of basketball, which is uh, uh, no egos involved, defensive domination from tip off until the final buzzer sounds. Uh, But let me know in the comments, do you have any legitimate concerns with the Cleveland Cavaliers? Do you think there are any reasons to panic from what we've seen on this West Coast road trip? Thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.